There are people that exercise seven days a week, work out two hours a day, and still cannot lose even an ounce. So the question is why? What makes someone be able to lose weight and other people cannot? Today we're going to talk about that. If you look around, you're going to notice that most people fall into one of four body shapes. Some people hold their weight in the stomach as a sagging belly, some people as a protruded, some people hold their weight in the saddlebag hip area and the arms, yet other people will be big everywhere. So I developed the body type system of weight loss and today we're going to talk about what's behind that because if there's something going on inside your body that's off or out of balance, the outside is going to be shaped differently. And there's nothing worse than doing all this work and not getting results. I mean, there are people that they just keep failing and failing and failing. It's not that they're crazy or lazy or have low willpower. It's they're not getting results. So today is about getting to the root. And what's very interesting is you don't really have a weight problem. I know that sounds weird. Now some of you are like, have you seen me in the mirror? <laughs> you have a weight symptom. It's really a hormone problem or a slow metabolism. But let's talk about hormones because there's a lot of confusion. I had a lady who said, I don't need to come to your seminar, Dr. Burr, because I had all my hormones removed. You, you have 600 hormones in your body. We're going to cover each one of them today. I hope you have a notebook. No, we're not going to cover all this. <laughs> but the ones we're going to talk about are the fat-burning hormones. But let's just define what a hormone is. I need a volunteer. How about you? <laughs> Great. Why don't you stand right here? She's like, do I have to just go in this front row? And I need another volunteer. Yeah, how about you? <laughs> So you can just stand right here. Okay, so you're going to be the fat cell, okay? <laughs> you're going to be the thyroid gland, okay? okay? So now thyroid, um, and you're going to communicate. I'm going to just put your fingers in your ear. Just pretend like you can't hear me, okay? Okay, good. So now thyroid, say hello to the fat cell. Hello. Okay, say burn fat. Burn fat. Okay, now do you have any kids? Three. Have you ever uh, talked to a child that he ignored you the first time? Yes. What do you do? Say it again. Okay, good. <laughs> Burn fat. Do you actually increase the volume too? Yeah. yeah. Burn fat. Okay. After a while, her face is going to get red. <laughs> so hormones are the communication sent across the distance over here, and it's supposed to connect into two little holes. They're called receptors. Hormones are communications. They have millions of functions, but the one we're talking about is the fat-burning hormone. So we have the gland that makes the hormone, it gets sent to the bloodstream, it gets received, and it's supposed to burn fat. Most people, this is what's going on. The communication is being sent, but it's not being listened to. So that's why um, they keep gaining weight. So thank you very much, and thank you very much. <laughs> see. Now that you understand hormones, let's go into the first body type, which is the, which is the thyroid gland. Now the thyroid is this body type right here where you gain weight all over equally, not in any one location. Now your thyroid is located right in the base of your neck right here. Just put your fingers on your thyroid. Lower, yeah, right there. It's about two and a half inches wide. It comes from the Latin word which means shield. Thyroid, because it looks like a little shield. It looks like this, okay? Now, if the thyroid's not working, you're gonna start developing too much what is called Potential energy. What's another name for a potential energy? Fat. Very good. How many feel like you have too much potential energy? It sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah. It has a better ring to it. We're going to get a t-shirt. I'm not fat. I have potential energy. So that's what it is. So fat, how many of you, be honest, don't like your fat? Yeah. Now, why does your body make it if it just makes you miserable? <laughs> does it have a purpose? Like maybe pe people think it's a cushion or an insulator to sit down? No. It's a survival mechanism. In other words, it is developed on the evolutionary chain of survival. So it, it helps you against, it protects against starvation, famine, and stress. So your body has stored fat to help you. So now you have a different viewpoint. It's trying to help you, right? But the question is, how do we get rid of it, right, if we have too much? Well, what do most people do? They go on a diet. 
what do they do? What's a diet? It's a starvation. <laughs> Hello. So what's going to happen? The more they diet, the more they starve themselves, the more they cut calories, the more they count calories, portion control, everything in moderation, you end up creating more potential energy, the exact thing you're trying to get rid of. So the things that people do to lose weight are the things that are ruining the metabolism. So with the thyroid, you'll have problems with excess weight because the thyroid goes into every single cell in the body. You're going to, every weight, your cell is going to expand and get bigger. That's why you're big equally everywhere. Now, the first symptom of a thyroid would be um, cravings to carbohydrates, okay? Starches, breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, muffins, sodas, juice, alcohol, Mad Dog 2020, <laughs> all of those things are carbohydrates. Now, how many of you ever ate something that you know you shouldn't have eaten at least once before? Got one, two, three, four, five, six. How do people justify it when they eat something bad? Moderation. Everything in moderation. I deserve, I deserve it. That's a good one. People are starving in Russia. <laughs> you got to eat everything on your plate. Just a little bit. I'll drink more water to flush it out. You can't be perfect all the time. So when you do something like that, what happens is you end up um, you have to make it okay, so you invent a reason for eating that thing. And so it stacks up. Um, I went to, I was at uh, the health food store, and I was shopping, and I saw one of my clients. Um, and she was, um, I was just watching, I was by the salad bar looking through the glass, and I saw her way over there by the bread section. And she kept going close to this little um, brownie tray. And I was just watching to see if she was going to get in. <laughs> and she would go closer, and then she would back up, and... And then she'd look back and come back here. And then eventually she, when, before she grabbed it, she looked, <laughs> looked left and right, and then she ate it. And then she looked right up, and we connected eyes. Her face turned white as a ghost, and she just went with a shop cart this way. So I ran after her, and I'm saying, I'm like, listen, it's okay. Just relax. Because if I didn't, if I didn't talk to her, make it okay, she would just, I would never see her again. So people tend to um, hide those little secrets with cheating and stuff. It's okay to cheat as long as you tell me. <laughs> Don't keep a secret. Just get it out. Um, because all we have to do is we have to find out why you're craving. But if you have a thyroid problem, you're going to crave the, the, the pleasure foods. Breads, potato, starch, rice. Okay? Uh, sourdough bread out of the oven with butter. Okay? They like that for some reason. So um, they crave carbohydrates. Um, they have problems with their hair. The hair starts getting thinner, uh, brittle. Um, they, they lose their hair and they comb it because those are proteins. They have problems with their nails. They get vertically ridged nails. Those are up and down ridges on the nails. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, you got your polish there. Um, oh, okay. So can you call 911, please? <laughs> no, so the ridges of the nails could mean thyroid. The problem with the thyroid, you'll have loose um, skin right here, right here. How many of you know anyone like that? Maybe like a coworker, a relative, a neighbor? Someone else. Yeah, someone else. So we have uh, thin skin, dry hair. Uh, you lose your eyebrows on the outer part right here first. That would be thyroid. Uh, thyroid cases have cold feet. They have to wear socks to bed. Someone told me, doesn't everyone? I go, no, that's not normal. <laughs> so they have a temperature problem. So they have problems. They're, they're tired. They, they, they could sleep for many, many hours, but they don't feel refreshed when they get up. Okay? So that would be thyroid. Any question about the thyroid? Thyroid cases do not absorb vitamins too well. Okay? So vitamins... Because the metabolism is so low, they don't break those things down. There's over 100 intracellular enzymes. Those are those little chemicals in the body that break stuff down that are, get shut down with the thyroid. So it's very expensive urine to be taking all these vitamins because it's going to go right through you. Um, so let's just talk as a side note. Not only um, is it a problem with absorption of vitamins, that, but most vitamins are made synthetically. Now, let's just show you something. In nature, 
vitamins always come in complexes. Ascorbic acid is one part of the vitamin C complex. Okay, it's just the antioxidant. Its purpose is to protect the real good stuff, which is vitamin J, P, K, and copper. These are, this is a natural vitamin C complex that comes in nature. This is synthetic right here, which is ascorbic acid. What's very interesting about that is that this comes from cornstarch and sulfuric acid. That's how they make ascorbic acid. There's no vitamin C in corn, yet they're making vitamin C. When you, it's artificial, though. When you take ascorbic acid in large quantities, which mainly you'll see in synthetic over 500 milligrams in these pills, which if it was natural would be the size of a golf ball and as a pill, when you take too much of this, it will create deficiencies of these other parts. It will literally create a vitamin C deficiency. I had a guy, he went to Mexico and he was going to cancer therapy and he took all this 100,000 milligrams of injected vitamin C, but it was really ascorbic acid. He ended up with bleeding gums, that's a sign of uh, vitamin C deficiency, uh, uh, varicose veins, spider veins, hemorrhoids, and extreme fatigue. That's all the signs of scurvy. So you always want to look on the back of the label and be able to read the label to see if it's real, like comes from actual plants. You don't want to have to pronounce, like can't pronounce these chemicals, okay? So most vitamins are made synthetically, 99%. And uh, even the most popular ones, which I'm not going to mention any of those vitamins' names, okay? <coughs> Centrum silver. Um, <laughs> but what happens is that there's another one called calcium carbonate. That's a mineral that's sold as um, a, a calcium supplement, right? Calcium carbonate is limestone. It's, not, it's, like, it's like a rock. You'd be better off chewing on the cement out there than you would taking that vitamin. So when you take your vitamin and you feel this heavy bottle, it's like a paperweight, it's just mainly calcium carbonate, which is limestone. It's not going to be absorbed. It's just going gonna, gonna to cause kidney stones. So read the labels. Make sure the vitamins and minerals come from plants that you can pronounce, not synthetics. Most uh, vitamins uh, or minerals are made from metals or rocks or salts, which don't really get absorbed. So there's a big difference. When people say there's no difference, there's a big difference. And then compound that, the fact that you have a thyroid case, you can't absorb anything. No wonder we have, um, that the vitamins that you take aren't really working. Okay, now, the next body type we're going to talk about is going to be called the adrenal. Now, the adrenal gland sits on top of the kidney. Right here, you got two of them. Go ahead and put your fingers on your adrenals. Now, the adrenal gland is a stress gland. How many have ever experienced stress before? Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Give me an example of what stresses people out. Work, traffic, children, kids, husbands, being overweight, school relationships, life, finances. Wow, you guys can relate to that. Um, how many have ever had a uh, stressful relationship before, at least once, twice? Okay. We'll stop right there. Um, so the adrenal reacts and adapts the body to stress. So if you pretend like you're being chased by a tiger for the next 10 years, and how your body would react to that, that's what happens with the adrenals over time when it burns out. Well, if you're being chased by a tiger, you're not going to be able to sleep, okay? You're not going to be able to reproduce, so you're going to have problems with hormones, uh, reproductive hormones. You're going to have problems with digestion. You're going to have problems with blood pressure and cholesterol and all these other things with blood sugars because you're running on sugar. So I'm going to go through all of them, but the adrenals regulate stress, and stress does accumulate. Yes, you're like a bucket, and you filled up. In fact, there is always some stress that has occurred right before you started developing a stubborn weight issue. Always. If you ask a person, they think it's just calories, right? Well, if you take it back, when did you start gaining weight? What happened just before that? You're going to find that they had a baby, C-section, a surgery, a hysterectomy, tubal ligation, they got married, they got a divorce, <laughs> all on that same date. <laughs> now, they have just a lot of different stresses. I've had people, even as kids, be, be overweight, and many times it comes after an asthma attack 
or a, or a ear infection or a throat infection. So many things that can stress the body out. But stress does accumulate and over time you develop too many applications on your desktop computer, which is your body. So all these things accumulate and you're just like a bucket of stress. Um, you're kind of, some people when we measure the inside of you are so jacked up they can't sleep, they can't relax. So I would say um, probably the biggest thing that stresses people out are other people. Is that true? There's certain personality types that kind of get to you. You got the whiner, right? They're like, um, will you please help me? Will you please help me? Do they ever accept your help? No. You just want to help? You just want to like, okay, let me push you downstairs. Now do you want my help? <laughs> so it's like you have whiners. You have the antagonistic person who's rude. You have um, the real depressed person that brings you down. You'll give them a solution. They say, no, that will never work. Or you have those really happy people that are always this happy. Uh, that doesn't stress me out, but sometimes it's like, if you're depressed, you don't really like these happy people. <laughs> They're just too positive all the time. But there's one personality type that really gets on my nerves, and they call it the um, passive aggressive, called underminers. Now, let me show you what they, what they look like. So everyone look at me very, very hostile right now. You're smiling. <laughs> Look at me very mean. Okay, now smile. Hi. Nice to meet you. They're going to backstab you. <laughs> to your face, they told you they stood up for you, but they actually ruin your reputation. They love gossip. How many of you know anyone like that? <clears throat> they give you a compliment, but they follow it up with a sharp critical comment. They'll say something like, hey, that's a nice uh, jacket. Was it on sale? I'm like, who would ever say that? It's like, oh, that's a nice haircut. Did you get it at Cheap Cuts? <laughs> my uncle. I mean, um, actually, yes, it was my uncle. Um, he goes, uh, congratulations. You graduated as a, as a chiropractor. Congratulations. Hey, why don't you want to become a real doctor? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have people that are bringing you up and people that are bringing you down, right? So those people, they bring you down covertly. So they're very introverting. They'll, they'll um, do something like this. Are you feeling OK? You look really tired. Are you sick? And you're like, I was fine until you said that. <clears throat> so I do have a way of getting back at these people. If you'd like to know about that, anyone want to know the technique? OK, just reverse the flow. Just do it back to them. Have you had, has that been growing for a while? <laughs> you don't have anything in your face. They'll be in the bathroom for hours looking at their face going, is there anything on here? Because they're introverting you. So yeah, OK. So let's move on to something less stressful. <laughs> but if you're in a relationship like that or someone's connected and you're trying to reason with them, don't hold your breath. You can't reason with them. That's what frustrates you because you just want to get them to see. Can't you see that you're crazy? No, they're not going to see that. <laughs> they have to be right. They'd rather be right than successful. So you're just better off just ignoring them, okay? So adrenal, when the adrenal gland gets burnt out, your tolerance for stress goes down. You don't tolerate people anymore. People get on your nerves. You become edgy, um, especially incompetent people, people that make mistakes. You kind of like, you might react more than you should, right? You're not going crazy, okay? <laughs> it's the adrenals. Because the tolerance of stress, your ability to tolerate stuff, stuff this kind of buffers it. So sometimes that buffer goes down, and you're, and you're just kind of on edge all the time. Um, the way you think, it's not linear. It's like popcorn thoughts just come in there like this. Um, your memory starts, the adrenal affects the GPS in the brain. So it's kind of like you're going downstairs. You're like, um, what am I looking for again? <laughs> Got to backtrack. Okay. Um, you'll be talking to someone, but you're actually having another conversation in your head. You might be waiting for the person to stop talking so you can talk because you're kind of thinking too fast. It's going too fast. What you're doing, you're solving problems 24-7. You can't stop solving problems. In fact, you can't stop thinking. <laughs> so with adrenal, they do a lot of thinking and because uh, they're in a survival mode. It's called flight or fight mode. That is, uh, the problem with that is it stirs up the adrenals even more. What they should be doing is just turn it off for at least, I don't know, like a half hour a day. Go for a walk, look at a tree, a bird, a cloud, and just get space. Don't get the headphones on and 
you know, look at your computer all the time. How many of you sit in front of the computer more than uh, five hours a day? 16 hours a day. Wow. Um, that, what happens is that it really kind of, the computers and everything kind of will stress your, your body too, especially if you have the computer right next to your body. I would try to get as far away as possible. Um, and even when you go to sleep at night, make sure there's no electrical stuff right by your head. Um, you got cell phones, you know, all that stuff. I, I'm very sensitive to um, energies, and I can pick up, like, I don't like talking in that cell phone. Somehow it just like, feels like there's a microwave in my brain. So I'm like, okay, I got to go. You know, just, that's why everyone's like, what's your cell phone number? Uh, I never pick it up because <laughs> I don't like that cell phone. So the adrenal, when the adrenal gets stressed, you can't tolerate stress, and you start increasing hormones that are going to cause belly fat, all right? So this is an adrenal body type shape right here. The weight is right there. Now, why is it in the belly primarily? Because your body's in survival, and as a stress mechanism, you're going to hold it around the most important organs, which happen to be in your midsection. Your body's trying to survive. It's trying to help you. It's protecting you against starvation, that low-calorie diet that you're going to go on. Yeah, so it's like going to put it right here. How many sit-ups will it take to flatten that belly? It's not going to happen. Why? Because it's coming from a hormone. Your problem is not your weight. It's your hormones. You have to reduce that cortisol. The things that people do to lose weight end up destroying their metabolism and their hormones. We don't want to jack that up anymore. So people take stimulants. You're already stimulated. You don't want to jack it up more. Um, so it goes there. Now, over time, instead of burning the belly fat off as energy, it's going to burn off your leg muscles before it even touches that fat. In other words, your body's going to use up your proteins in your, in your thighs. So guess what that's connected to? Your knees. That's why you have a lot of knee problems with, with adrenal, and you have a lot of collagen because all the, the glue that holds the body together falls apart. So you have loose skin. It's called pendulous abdomen. It kind of sags right here. And when you get it from a seated position, you kind of like, you're getting up. Climbing is a problem. Your legs are heavier. Don't worry, it gets worse. So after these legs become dissolved, then your adrenals will go after another muscle called the gluteus maximus. What muscle is that? Behind. You're behind. <laughs> so, so what happens is not only do we get us thinner legs and bigger trunk, but we get no butt. So you get no butt, no legs, all belly. You've seen people like that, right? So you have something to look forward to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm telling you, you, gotta, you have to um, gotta start now. <laughs> Just pre pre preventing, okay? Um, I've had relatives that before menopause, oh my goodness, waist like this, after, like that. So, yeah. So adrenal um, glands will cause all sorts of problems with stress responses, and it affects their ability to sleep. Normally, when you go to sleep at night, you're supposed to go through four waves of sleep. From a light sleep here, to a deep sleep here. Now, down here, in the lower parts, this is called the delta wave sleep right here. That's where you burn 98% of all your fat, not during the day. All the fat burning occurs right there. If you're not sleeping, you're not going to burn fat. But in your mind, you're thinking you're wasting your time. I should be walking while I'm sleeping <laughs> just to burn off those calories. So let's talk about calories for a second. Um, yes, exercise does burn calories. That's true, but not necessarily fat calories. Let's take a look at something. When a normal person exercises, they, they actually stress their body out. Okay, it sounds pretty interesting, but what all the benefit from that exercise occurs in the recovery 14 hours to 24 hours later when you're in the deep sleep, if you're sleeping, if you let yourself recover. You ever hear that workout called the P90X or the Insanity Workout? I normally see people who are like 45, they start doing that. You ever see the videos? They have like 18-year-olds. <laughs> if you have low recovery, like low endurance, low fitness, and you do that, something that high, you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> you're going to pull a hamstring. I see it all the time. My son, I took him to wrestling practice, and he's like 16, 17. I was wrestling in college. We go there. 
and all the fathers are in a, around the mat. They're standing around the perimeter with their shoes off, with their socks on, waiting to jump in there, because in their mind, they're still 18. One guy breaks a rib. This guy, you know, he runs out of, almost like had a heart attack. It was hilarious. So mentally, you might still be 18. Physically, you may not be quite that level. So it really, all the benefit occurs in the recovery after the workout. So when you exercise, you stress your body, and then you're supposed to recover, and that's when you burn the fat, not during the workout. If you don't believe me, go work out three hours and weigh yourself before and after. You'll burn 900 calories, but no actual weight loss. Okay, so it's all right here. If you can recover, adrenal cases don't recover that well. So they don't adapt. So the exercise only as good as if you can change or adapt to it. So that's really what we're dealing with is how do you get your body to change from the things you're doing it? How many found when you're 18 you can pretty much eat anything you want? And really, you can just get away with it, right? How many find you can't quite get away with it now? What is the difference? The difference is your metabolism, the rate, your metabolism. Okay, that's really what's broken. You really have to exercise based on your ability to recover from it. It's better off for adrenals if you go walking on a flat surface than to get on that treadmill to burn off the calories. So the thing that people do, cut calories, starvation, exhaustive exercise, is the exact thing that's keeping that weight there. And they're frustrated because they've been taught that, oh, everyone knows that you just have to exercise and diet. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, those people that are saying that have never probably worked with one person, I bet. I've been there in the field of weight loss for 25 years. I worked on 35,000 different people. I believe a patient, because I observe them, they're eating good and it's still not working. They're doing the treadmill, it's still not working. So it really has to do with the internal. So we want to adjust the workout to um, your ability to adapt. That's why you have to, you can't put everyone in the same program. Everyone needs their, their own program. So with adrenal, either they can't get to sleep because they're so wound up and they can't relax because they're thinking so much, or they get up in the middle of the night like two, and just like they're more awake at two than they are during the day. In fact, right after lunch or three o'clock, they're just ready to go to sleep. So either they can't get to sleep, they can't stay asleep, or the bladder, which actually is controlled by the adrenal, has to eliminate. You know, so they're getting up urinating several times a night. That's adrenal. The best sleep for the adrenal is a half hour before the alarm clock goes off, right there. Right when you finally get to sleep, that's when you got to get out. Yeah. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah. Don't worry, it gets worse. Um, so we got the adrenal will affect the sleep, create an inability to see change from a workout, and it also will affect your um, cognitive. It affects a lot of other things as well. It affects blood pressure. Yeah, that's one of the symptoms from the adrenal is high blood pressure, especially of the top number, the systolic, before the diastolic. So always look at the top number. If the top, top number is high, we know it's adrenal. So because your, your body's, you lost that recovery mechanism to kind of keep the pressure down. So you have blood pressure, we have blood sugar. Yes, diabetes is a symptom of adrenal because they control the sugars. Blood cholesterol is adrenal. Yeah. Cholesterol is needed to make adrenal hormones during stress. The more stress you go through, the more cholesterol you need to be able to build those hormones. And then you have all allergies are adrenal, including the sinus. Low vitamin D levels are, are adrenal. You, you, I know your doctor's saying, go oh, take vitamin D, you're deficient, but they're not asking why. Okay? Arthritis, all the itises. In fact, anything connected with inflammation is adrenal. Poor handwriting, and that's me. Um, I could write the first part of the, the word, but the last part just kind of gets all lost. So what this means blood pressure, blood sugar, blood cholesterol, allergies, vitamin D, inflammation, and um, cognitive issues, um, insomnia. Other than that, you're perfectly healthy. Now, here is the problem. What happens is that the medical system treats, treats these. They don't ask 
why. There's no evaluation. What they'll do is take that symptom, okay? These are symptoms. This is what symptom is. And then they make it the problem, okay? They confuse the symptom with the problem. It's like one of those obvious things. I'm like, is it just me? Why is anyone asking this question? Because if you ask your doctor, what caused this? What they'll do is convert it to a very scientific complex name, okay? You have lumbalgia. What does that mean? <laughs> Low back pain. Oh, okay. You have fibromyalgia. What does that mean? You got, you're hurting all over your body. Uh, you have plantar fasciitis. What does that mean? You got pain in the foot. You have dystatokinesis. Sounds pretty scientific. That means you can't do this with your body. You can't rotate it back and forth. You have spondylolisthesis. What does that mean? You have a, you have a broken back. There's all these labels. Post-traumatic stress syndrome. It means you, you got some stress in your past. <laughs> they have one now called um, non-compliance to treatment disorder. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. Non-compliance to treatment disorder. If you don't do what the doctor says. I told my son that, and he said, oh, homie don't play that? I'm like, <laughs> I, said, I said, what does homie don't play that mean? He said, that means um, I'm not going to do what you say. I'm like, oh, OK. Then you, you're going to get a diagnosis from the doctor. Because <laughs> he's going to go, you have non-compliance to treatment disorder. Well, maybe you didn't want the surgery. Maybe you want a second opinion, and they'll put this label. They have uh, manic depressive. What does that mean? It means that you're happy and sad. What's wrong with being happy, you know? You have a clinical depression. It could mean that you're not sleeping. People that don't sleep get depressed. So it's just amazing. And then it's treated with a poison. I'm sorry, a medication. Um, my whole thought is that what's really missing in healthcare is the health part. It's kind of like that. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, did I just think of that? Is that an original idea, or does everyone know that? <laughs> I mean, it's bizarre. There's no health in healthcare. It's all disease care. There are underlying principles to all subjects in life that are very high principles that everything kind of must revolve around. Okay? My whole principle in weight loss is getting healthy to lose weight, not losing weight to get healthy. You have to focus on your health. Now, that's pretty powerful because if you don't know that, you're very susceptible to the next unhealthy diet that comes along or a little gimmick that might not be healthy. But if you look at it from the viewpoint of, OK, is that healthy? Yes, OK, that might work. Let's just take the word food. How many of you eat food? OK, yeah. How many of you never looked up the definition of the word food before? OK, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's that which is eaten to sustain life, provide energy, and promote the growth and repair of tissue. It comes from the Latin word, which means nourishment, nutrients. So food is nutrients. That's why we're supposed to eat it. We're not supposed to eat food for necessarily anything other than health and nutrients. But so when you go into the grocery store, you can ask now, hmm, what am I in the mood for? No, 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 no. Don't ask that, because you're going to get a brownie. Um, but if you say, what can get me more nutrition. What's, what can I eat that has more nutrition? That's very powerful, because then you get to stay out of trouble. I guarantee all the junk foods don't have a lot of nutrition. They don't, other than synthetic vitamins. In politics, you have uh, underlying principles that you use. Like, the, I guess the principle in politics, or the underlying senior principle would be something like, um, don't spend more than you have, right, in the budget. Would that be kind of a smart thing, get out of trouble? So I guess we don't have to worry about that one, just being sarcastic. Um, and then you have, um, what about in, um, um, in the area of health in general? You have to, or health care, you have to create your health. Can you imagine if we just put 1% of the, of the uh, money we put in sick care or health care into just prevention or creating health? It's over. It's over. I mean. Prevention. The problem is the doctors will say, okay, let's check you in six months, okay? And you keep coming back. Let's check you. Let's check you. <sighs> Sorry to tell us you have cancer. Get your stuff together, and uh, it's, we're going to do chemo. What was to be done to prevent it? What was done to create the health? There's nothing. What are they going to do? An aspirin a day? I had to get life insurance, okay? Reese, I'm still trying to figure out why my wife wanted me to get life insurance. <laughs> so I go to the doctor. My cholesterol is... Uh, 180, it's pretty good. Doctor says, well, 
It's normal, but we're going to prevent. We're going to we're going to practice some preventative medication. I'm like what? What are you talking about? It's normal. He goes, I know, but we're just doing it on everyone right now. I'm like, no, thank you, no. So he goes, no, no, I have a free sample, Lipitor. I'm like, no, that has side effects. He goes, oh no, that's you can't believe the articles. You can't believe. I'm like, <laughs> like, you get a kickback. So the point is that there's a lot of corruption in the area of pharmaceuticals and drugs. You already know that, but the point is that. You have to start creating your health because the doctors just don't know how. I train doctors. I train over 2,400 doctors. They're not taught how to get someone healthy other than the food pyramid. Drink more water, eat more fiber. You know, it's just like, it's not significant. So you really have to learn how to create health yourself and start building your health because no one else is going to do it for you. Cancer takes 20 years to grow in your body. I mean, all of you probably have some cancer cells in your body. It's what you're doing in your environment that's countering that right now to protect you. You literally, you have to create your health every day. So I look at people a little differently. Like what I'll do when I'm listening to people, I'll just dissect them in half and I'll go, okay, what are the things they're doing to create their health? And what are the things they're doing to counter create their health? Because doing nothing is counter creating, right? So, and it's amazing. It's, it makes it so simple. I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow, look at this. Like, you don't have, you don't realize that, many people don't realize that the cravings are a very simple nutrient deficiency, potassium. When you have low potassium, you will crave sugar, guaranteed. When you get your daily amount of potassium, you will not crave sugar. It's that simple. How many have craved sugar? Okay, if I tell you what to do, would you, would you do it to get rid of cravings within 24 hours, or actually 48 hours? Okay, so do this thing right here. Normal amount of potassium we need is 4,700 milligrams a day. Now, what food are, is high in potassium? Bananas. bananas, right? That's 400, okay? How many bananas would it take? 12. 12 bananas, right? So, you're not gonna do 12 bananas, okay? So. The amount of potassium you need is so high, you don't even realize it. There's a lot of potassium. So what you can do is you can have all the leafy greens. You would need seven cups, just seven cups. It's not hard. A couple salads a day, and you will fulfill your daily amount requirement for potassium. You, won't, you will not have cravings. It's wonderful to help protect against diabetes, this right here, because when you have that potassium, it helps stabilize your blood sugars. But how many of you really don't consume tw uh, seven cups of salad a day? Hardly anyone does. How the heck are you ever going to get your potassium? So um, this is the problem is we don't really know what foods have the right nutrients and, and the soils are so depleted. If you, would, if you wanted to get your basic nutrients of trace minerals, okay, those are little minerals that you need in small amounts, in your food right now with the soils the way they are, you would have to consume 27,000 calories of food. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty hard, isn't it? That's a lot of food eating every day. So you're going to have to or uh, enhance your diet with something. Just make sure it's the right nutrients, plant-based. You have to concentrate. But yeah, that's, this is the problem is that people don't know how to create health. And so it's kind of crazy. So, so we have the adrenal. We have, uh, with the problem with the adrenal is you get fluid retention because all the electrolytes are controlled the sodium potassium is controlled by the adrenal. In other words, when you have adrenal problems, you lose potassium. Your salts and electric, all these things that keep the fluid moving are gone. So the fluid's gonna pull in your ankles. When you press your ankle and it leaves a little dent, that's fluid retention. You shouldn't have that, okay? Go ahead and press your ankle and see if you have any indentations there. Can you call 911? No. <laughs> so fluid in the ankles is purely an electrolyte problem because the adrenal, it's backing up fluid. So we have that. We're going to have salt cravings for adrenal too. Salt cravings. That's adrenal. Salt is the, is the mineral that recharges the battery. That's why you need a little chip at night when you go home. I mean, just to recharge your battery because you're drained. Most of you are like a car in the freeway. The battery is dead and you're putting gas in the car. <laughs> Why doesn't this thing start? Now you're pushing the car. It's getting kind of heavy. So electrolytes, fluid. Now, how much water should you drink? Eight glasses. Eight glasses, Eight right? Glasses. Who told you that? <clears throat> they told you. Someday, 
I'm going to find out who they is because that is a myth. I was taught that you would drink. I still can't find the, uh, where do you find this information. Only drink when you're thirsty. Here's what I found. The more water you drink, the more dehydrated you become. Why? Because it flushes out the electrolytes that are supposed to hold the water there. There's a condition right now that I think it's called um, hyponutremia, which is actually too much water, which is flushing electrolytes, and you can die. Die by drinking too much water. So drink when you're thirsty. I have a machine. I measure fluid in, in a person's body. Normally, people that drink the most water are the most dehydrated. Don't worry, it gets worse. <laughs> so they um, is everywhere. It's nowhere. It's like, I don't know who they is. So you have um, fluids. We have calcium. Calcium is controlled by the adrenal. Not just bone loss, not just muscle cramps, but you need calcium to have to wind down at night. Without good adrenals, your calcium will deposit, not in the bone, but on the bone, as arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis, tartar in the teeth, cataracts, kidney stones, gallstones, bursitis, all the itises and twitching in the left eyelid right here. Yeah, that's calcium. So again, what do people take? Calcium, carbonate, limestone. It's in the one-a-days. Anytime you get a vitamin that's prescribed, prescription, at a pharmacy, oh my goodness, that's like, how low can you go? It's just way off the deep end. It's just going to be rocks. You need plant-based minerals. This is how it works. The plant is supposed to break down the minerals like rocks in the earth and absorb them into the plant and make them easy to digest. The plant-based minerals are 10,000 times smaller than rocks and metallic minerals that you would get like sea salts. Yeah, 10,000 times smaller. So that would be the equivalent to a, um, a golf ball to the Empire State Building. So you absorb these plant-based minerals. So much better. You ever find that when you eat food, you don't feel satisfied? Like it just doesn't quite, even water just doesn't satisfy you because the nutrients aren't there. Why do you think you keep craving? <laughs> so it's just, it's a deficiency. So we have uh, sinus problems. Oh, that's another diagnosis, sleep apnea. What does that mean? It means that your sinuses are blocked. Like very, I mean, it's just amazing how it's gotten out of control. Um, and so right now, the answer to healthcare is not spending more money on it. It's just to do more prevention. The whole philosophy is broken. But there's no money in prevention. It's too cheap. I mean, it's very cheap. In fact, I can take every one of your grocery bills and probably find $100 every two weeks of, of food that you could just switch over to healthier food and just, and, and just take that and create health. It's not that hard. It's just choices of what to eat in the grocery store. Why do I know this? Because I go in the grocery store and I see what they have. <laughs> it's so bad. It's amazing. I'm like, wow, people must be buying that because it's there. I mean, trying to find food in the grocery store, it's not easy. It's like, um, so we have adrenal. Any other question about the adrenal body type? It's kind of an interesting type. Snoring, Snoring because the sinuses, there's a nerve that goes in the back of the sinuses that if the adrenal gland shrinks it because the cortisol, and it actually makes this thicker, so you're like, you know, snoring. So we have uh, adrenal. Now, um, the other thing is that, of course, my wife says that sometimes that I make that sound. I'm like, no, I don't. And she goes, okay, I'm going to record you. I'm like, okay, you can prove it. <laughs> so that's adrenal. Now, the next body type is the ov ovary body type. This is it right here. See this body type? Look where they gain the weight, lower part, in the hips, thighs. That's estrogen dominance. Take a while to guess why you don't see very many men that look like that. They don't have ovaries. Very good. So the ovary will produce too much estrogen. The estrogen makes fat around the superficial from here down. It will also make your arms get big and the breasts get big. I had one patient, she was so estrogen dominant, she became a size H. I didn't even know it goes that high. I thought D, double, triple D was the highest. Let's see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yeah, that's estrogen dominance. How do you know if you're estrogen dominant? If you look like that, and also you have heavy periods, cramping, PMS, 
all that. Guess what that's going to do? It's going to make a fibroid. I see so many women with fibroids. It's estrogen dominance. So what's the solution? Cut it out. I mean, they're not doing anything. There are foods that you can eat right now that will balance estrogen. It's called the cruciferous vegetable. Cruciferous vegetables are like kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all the foods that no one eats. Those are very estrogen. They clean up the estrogen. They balance it and the chemicals. Thank goodness we have those foods in our diet um, if we ever eat them. <laughs> but mainly people cook the heck out of them, don't they? So um, estrogen dominant will cause anything wrong with the cycle. Heavy periods, um, headaches that time of the year, uh, month, uh, cravings that time of the month, um, PMS. How many of you know people that are PMS? Okay. I can see the husbands are not like, they're like. No, I'm just kidding. So you have all these different issues that happen that time of the month if it's cyclic because the hormones go on waves, just like all these circadian waves. Um, fertility, infertility, because estrogen. Do you know what's really amazing? Things, <laughs> you have this estrogen dominant patient, and guess what they give them? Birth control pills. What the? It's the exact opposite thing. You're gonna put them more in estrogen dominance. What food should they stay away from? Soy, why? because soy is very estrogenic, and the soy that's in America is not the same that's in other places. It's not fermented. It's like, it's just soy powder. It's soy protein isolates. What does that do? It's gonna grow tumors in your liver, in your, um, in your um, um, where else, in the ovaries, in the uterus. It'll grow tumors. It's very tumor producing. Yeah, I see it all the time. There were even some men that came in that were drinking so much soy milk they started lactating. That was enough for me to cut it completely out of the diet. But there's, estrogen is very, very um, bad for the liver, and um, it's, every, it's, in almost a lot, it's in a lot of foods, isn't it? It's genetically modified. It's almost 100% genetically modified in the U.S., and that means they alter the structure. So there's a lot of unknowns right now. There's no studies. So um, they, you know, it doesn't have to be on the label, too, to be genetically modified. They could just stick it in there. So you have um, soy. It's in also in a lot of um, prepackaged foods. A lot of diets. Yeah, isn't that interesting? The stuff that causes estrogen is in these diets. Why do they use it? Because it's so cheap. It's so cheap. I made a kale shake with, um, I was going to put some protein, and the guy that was helping me develop the formula, he says, oh, you got to put some soy in. It's really cheap. I'm like, what you, I'm not going to put that in there. That's going to like kill people. So I, I put um, spirulina. That's like a, veg, vegeta, uh, a vegetable, um, a sea vegetable. So it has some egg white, organic egg white, and kale. But the point is that you don't want to do a lot of estrogen with that because you want to make sure if they're doing meats and dairy that they, they have organic, hormone-free. This body type craves dairy. They like ice cream, cheese, yogurt. <laughs> It's wild. They're trying to get some hormones in there to try to balance something because they're out of balance. It won't ever work, though. So they have a lot of issues with that. Um, and then when they get to be age 52, the ovaries stop working. Okay? But guess what? You have a backup organ. Here's the ovaries. The adrenals are little triangles on top of the kidney. These start doing the work. So now, if the adrenal glands are weak going into menopause, you're going to overload those things, and now this is going to do all the work. And so now you're going to have all sorts of problems with hot flash flashes, night sweats. Okay? Does anyone have a hot flash? Okay. So hot flashes are basically a short circuit in the electrical system of your body that's just kind of like... It's blowing that heat right there. Someone's having a hot flash right now. Um, so that would be hot flashes. So this body type ends up looking like this body type after menopause. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to give you a clue that you better do something now <laughs> before it's too late. <laughs> now, some of you in your mind, you're thinking, wow, I'm a mixed body type. I'm everything, right? You always have a primary. Too much estrogen will block the thyroid. That's why when you get pregnant, you might end up with a thyroid problem. 
because the excess estrogen will block this and then create all sorts of problems. Many, many borderline thyroid cases need to take thyroid medication when they're pregnant because of the spike of estrogen. So all these things work together. If the liver is bad, which we're going to get to next, your thyroid can't work. Your thyroid needs that liver to convert. Like 80% of all the activation of that hormone occurs through your liver. So I had a lady, she came in, she did the wrong diet for her body type. She did the high protein diet, okay? She was a liver type. Liver types should not do high protein diets, okay? What happened, she lost weight, but she also lost all of her hair. Well, she had two gray hairs. Uh, she had a wig, a very nice wig. Um, and she came in and she said, Dr. Bigger, gotta help me. I'm like, okay, what's going on? She goes, look at, I was like, okay, yes, we need, to, we need to work on that. So I said, um, what happened to you? She goes, I just did this diet, I lost all my hair. I said, bingo, you mess with your liver and then the block the thyroid. Now here's the problem. She was, gonna, she, was, she was gonna get married, okay? Her husband, future husband, had no clue she was completely bald. Okay, that's the situation, wouldn't you, Rick? It's like, it's, it's like the honeymoon night. Um, honey, now that we're married, um, surprise! <laughs> and, you're like, and then he pulls off his toupee. I think there was like a movie where you can pull off your arm and your leg. And, um, so I worked on her. I do a technique which, which works on old stress. It's an acupressure, not puncture. And we worked on her and uh, worked on the liver. And um, she got her hair back in three weeks, tiny little hair. She came back. She was real happy, got married, never told them. Went great. Yeah. So these hormones have dominating things, dominating power to do certain things. We, when you actually age, when you go from 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, okay, hormones change. Metabolism slows down. Would you agree with that? <laughs> you can't keep doing the same thing with the calorie counting. You have to look at the hormones in relationship to the triggering of the fat burning hormones. I'm gonna show you something before I get to the next body type real fast. Hormones, there are three dominating hormones that if present in small amounts will completely block and cancel all the fat burning hormones, okay? In other words, you have two things. You have things that you should avoid and you have things that you should do. The things that you should avoid are much, 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 much more important than the things that you should do. It's the little stuff, okay? So let's take this one. The first one is called insulin. Insulin is a hormone that regulates sugar. It, it decreases sugar. It's triggered by sugar. So every time you eat sugar, it spikes the insulin. Okay? And then you become a diabetic, and then sugar goes high. It doesn't go down, so you have to take insulin. In the presence of just a little tiny bit of insulin, it can cancel out and completely destroy all the good stuff that you did. So let's just make this real. Let's take a cookie, 80 calories. You can walk that off in about a mile. But the sugar in that one cookie will, will block fat burning for 72 hours if you have a slow metabolism, like most people do. A half a glass of orange juice, a glass of wine, unless Dr. Oz told you to do it, <laughs> which I'm just being sarcastic because uh, I'm like, wine is alcohol, it's sugar. It's, like it's going to completely block you. So we got insulin, right? It's the little stuff that's going to really mess you up. So we have, to, we have to give you substitutes for the thing you crave. I already know a habit is almost impossible to break. So we don't want to take all the pleasure away from you in life. We want to tweak it. So there's things you can eat. Brownies, for example, that have no sugar, and no flour. And you can eat those. You just have to know how to make them. And we have the recipes we can give you. And you can actually have it in the refrigerator and go for that every night or when you, when you like that. Number two, cortisol. Too much cortisol, that's the stress. You're not going to lose weight. And, that, and how do you get rid of stress? Sleeping, walking. I teach people to do an acupressure technique, which basically pulls the stress out. You do it before bed, and you just get into a good sleep, and it extracts the old stress. So cortisol will block fat burning. That's why you have, like, 
when you have physical trauma and then you have losses, loss of a loved one or a divorce, whatever, that will hit the adrenal a thousand times harder than a physical trauma. That's why you have people that like, after like this major event, they're just like, they never recover. That's why you get autoimmune diseases like lupus, MS, they all come after losses, okay? So then we have the last hormone that makes you fat is called estrogen. <laughs> Remember all those hidden sources of estrogen? It's in the hormones. In Europe, people are thinner than Americans. In America, we got girls going through the menstrual cycle a lot earlier, larger breasts. Kids are fatter. You might say it's a lot of different things, but I think the hormones are really messing us up. Um, if you, now do you guys realize that turkeys are fed hormones? That's why they're bigger. They're huge, right? They can grow them fast. If you consume the turkey that's been injected with a hormone, is it possible that some of that residue can get in your body? Yes. If it makes a turkey a butterball turkey, <laughs> Is it possible to make a butterball out of you? <laughs> a butterball turkey out of you? <laughs> Welcome to America. You're in the wrong country at the wrong time. So some of these poor countries, they're really rich in nutrients, but they come here and they just get fat. I see it all the time. They move to America. I'm like, you're doing fine until you moved here. Um, Welcome to Virginia. So we have to eat and understand how to fortify our hormones, okay? That's really important. So the last body type is called the liver body type. The liver is located right here, the size of a football. It's three and a half pounds. Put your hand on your liver. It's on the right side, the military right over here. Okay, good. Your liver is kind of an extra organ. You don't really need it. I'm just being sarcastic. The liver, if if it becomes dysfunctional, you're going to start getting more of a protruded pot belly. Okay? You ever see the guy on the beach with the Speedo? Sorry to give that image, but that's kind of like a basketball belly. It's hard. It's higher. If you take your hand on one side and tap it, it'll create a little ripple. Why? Because most of it's fluid. It's called ascites. It's a fluid. It means fluid. It, it's leak, the liver's leaking fluid into that sac right there. So. How many sit-ups won't work? Sit-ups won't work. Their legs are skinny. It's just right there. It's not just beer. It's actually fluid coming from the destruction of the liver. The two foods that destroy the liver are heavy cooked proteins, animal proteins. Heavy cooked Texas-style steaks, this thick, big ones, every night before you go to bed. <laughs> deep fried food, deep fried catfish will do it too. <laughs> just all that fat in meat will just destroy the liver. So the worse the liver, the more you can't tolerate the heavy proteins. The older you get, the less you can tolerate red meat. So what happens is that you want to adjust the food based on your weakness. But the good thing about the liver, it's the only organ that can completely regenerate 100%. But the bad news is it takes three years of eating a certain way. Okay? The liver is the hub of so many things. The liver will cause... A liver problem will cause pain on the right side, right shoulder. Why is it on the right shoulder? The liver's on the right. It's going to be swell up. It's going to go right here. If you have a liver problem, don't sleep on your left side because it's too heavy. It's going to compress the heart. You're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to sleep on the right side. The liver will create uh, little red spots on your skin, little red dots, skin um, um, psoriasis, eczema, little liver spots, uh, itchy skin, um, hot feet, white tongue, that's a yeast, Chronic halitosis, that's bad breath sometimes. They usually talk to you very close in front of your face. Um, they don't know that they have bad breath. Um, it's like, really? Um, they have a lot of digestive bloating. Okay. Now, the liver makes bile. Now, there's a confusion about bile. Some people think it's bowel. No, no, no. That's bowel. Bile, B-I-L-E. Bile helps. It's like the detergent that breaks down the grease. It helps you digest the fats. And it helps you absorb the fat vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A. If you're deficient in vitamin A, you're gonna have a hard time seeing at night. You're gonna have sinus problems. You're gonna have dry skin. You're gonna have a little uh, uh, yellow thing in the inside of your eye right here, a little tag there. There's a lot of uh, issues with vitamin A. Vitamin D, you're gonna have problems with calcium. You're gonna have problems with seasonal uh, depression. Vitamin E, you're gonna have problems with libido. 
vitamin, um, let's see, A, E, D, and K. You're going to have bruising. So you have a lot of other issues just from you don't have bile. How do you know if you don't have bile? You're going to bloat when you eat. You're going to get bloating, burping, belching, headache on the right side. 98% of headaches and migraines are coming from that right there. Try an experiment. Next time you get a headache, press right here on your gallbladder. Just press right there and just hold that for two minutes. You, your headache will go right away. The problem is not in your head, it's in your down here. Because when you step on a dog's tail, he barks through his mouth, right? OK, I'm just checking. <laughs> so we get bloating, burping, belching. Many people don't have the bile. And they're bloat when they, they, like at night, they feel like they're pregnant. Yet during the day, they're a flat stomach. Is that real to anyone? OK. So the liver, they, they, they crave deep fried catfish. They, they like deep fried anything because they're not absorbing it. So you're going to want the stuff that you can't absorb. The other symptom is that when you eat, you're going to need a little sweet after you eat. You need that little sweet because you're not digesting fats to satisfy your blood sugars. Okay? You're going to be grouchy in the morning because you have a low blood sugar in the morning. How many work with people that are grouchy in the morning? Okay? So what you do on Monday when you go back to work, just go up to, uh, go up to the guy. Hey, John, listen. You know, I've been holding a grudge on you because you've been very kind of grouchy. But now I know it's just your liver. I forgive you. <laughs> or the next time you go to the all you can eat buffet, just go in line. Uh, excuse me, sir. Have you ever had your liver checked? Uh, do you have any right shoulder pain? Uh, do you ever itch in the bottom of your feet? Uh, let me see your tongue for a second. <laughs> Here's Dr. Berg's card. You might want to give him a call. Do you get bloating, by the way? <laughs> Actually, don't mention my name if you say that. Um, they might get offended. See, the problem with teaching you the seminar is you're going to want to evaluate everyone you know. Everywhere you go, you're going to spot, oh, liver, sorry. So that is liver. Um, liver is, uh, they do very well on cruciferous vegetables. Okay? Any other questions about the body types? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know a male cannot to have ovary, ovary. Yeah. What about the other? What would it look like to see a male? Um, it's very rare. So she asked a question, why you, what would it look like if it was a male with these other ones? It's, the, it's very rare to have a primary thyroid body type. It's usually secondary to having the thyroid removed because of estrogen dominance. Too much estrogen is underneath most of the thyroids. I mean, it's just, it's almost non existent. This is very common, this, this uh, adrenal right here, just because of stress. That's probably the number one thing. Uh, you see this because of just bad eating from years. Um, but the ovary is very common too. So this one here, these three are very common. So if, if that guy was a, a thyroid, they would just be big all over. If that guy was adrenal, he would have more of a, a sagging belly. It wouldn't be so high in the top, okay? And of course, he wouldn't have that, typically. Um, let's see, he had a little soy milk. Now, this next thing I'm going to tell you is so important. It's the most important thing that I have to talk about. So if anyone's checked out, check back in right now. Are you here? <laughs> um, you've heard that obesity is a health risk, right? It causes diabetes, heart attack, stroke, cancer, bad luck, right? Everything, right? That's what I was taught too. But I found that's absolutely not true. It's a myth. Let me explain. I had a patient come in, 29 years old, weighed 325 pounds, did my program. This is a long time ago. Take a while, guess how much weight she lost in the first month? Nope. Nope. No. 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 Exactly. It's zero pounds. She lost zero pounds. Okay. Now, who would be depressed if you lost zero weight? Yeah. But she was actually okay with it because she felt better. Okay. The second month, she lost 21 pounds. The third month, she lost 63 pounds. It was at that point when I had a, a light bulb go off. I'm like, wow. You don't, you don't lose weight and get healthy. You get healthy to lose weight. 
See, I've been doing it the other way around. That changed my whole practice because now everything that I aligned was going to get them healthy. And I started to see results on people that wouldn't normally ever get results. It's the health. You cannot be fat and healthy at the same time. Being healthy, the weight comes off as a natural side effect. Obesity is a symptom of an unhealthy body, not the cause of it. Why are they doing that? Why are they pushing it so they can come up with the drugs to treat it again? It's a symptom. Does this make sense? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to change your viewpoint, goal, from losing weight to creating more health. Go ahead and do it right now. Go ahead and just shift. Make the shift. Come on, in the back there. Shift it. OK, good. So have you decided that you'll create more health? Because that's how you do it. Forget about the diets. We have to get your lifestyle corrected. Forget about vitamins, unless you can get your eating corrected. Because understanding that is a superior principle that will take you not just to lose weight, but to get younger as you get older. I'm 65. No, I'm just kidding. No, no I'm 47. But I feel like I'm 25. Um, I mean, I wrestle my kids. Um, and, I, um, and I'm like, I'm, in, I'm working out. I'm, I'm actually trying to reverse the aging process. And so that's what I want you guys to do. As every year you get older, you're getting younger. But all it takes is a shift of viewpoint. Rather than, oh, here's the diet, you have to understand what to do. So there's three things I want you to do. Number one, find out your body type. Number two, get in a plan that's specific for your body type. And number three, stick to it through creating healthy habits that you can do long term. So it's all about create your health every day. It has to be built just like everything else in life. I want to thank you guys for coming. I hope you learned something. I appreciate your attention this long. Have a great afternoon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.